Yes, mate. Okay, so it's the end of the day now, about quarter past five, mate. I actually just posted a fucking jokes video onto Instagram. It's a car review of Don't You by Alchemist, an absolute banger. But yeah, luckily work was not busy at all like today or this afternoon. Maybe because I'm ahead of the game, mate, or maybe just because it wasn't busy. But either way, it meant that I could spend the afternoon sorting out my music, which is naughty. So it's taken me two hours in total to sort of sort out all of my files. And like I said, I'm going to take you guys through what I did. I also put up a, like a poll on Instagram sort of asking if people would be interested in like seeing how I'm planning or how I have organised, because I've already done it, how I've like reorganised my record box folders. And... Yeah, people responded positive to it. They were like, yeah, we'd like to see that. So that's fucking sick, mate. So just want to quickly say, if you're not into mixing, not into DJing, or if you're like, don't really care about what I'm going to talk about for the next potential five minutes, then I appreciate you for watching the video up until this point. You might as well just fucking click off now and watch something else. I did make some very fucking bad bullet points like just now just to make sure that I remember to cover everything as like I've already done it and I'm going to be overlaying some footage. So the first thing, first things first, is when you go into record box, make sure you're in export mode. You should always edit your tracks in export mode, so when you're ever you're adding cue points to them, etc. This is where you do it, mate, and always do it in your collection. Always edit the tracks in your collection because that will edit them everywhere. So once you've made playlists, if you edit them in the collection, wherever they appear in your playlists, it will automatically edit them like across if that makes sense mate so yeah always export mode and then in your collection mate so the first thing that i did was deleted all of my old playlists there's like nothing wrong with doing this it's not going to remove them from your collection you literally just right click and delete playlist so deleted all my playlists apart from one which was d and b all which i then ended up changing to be like just all uh, all tracks i believe and all i did is i went to my collection highlighted all of them just like clicked on the first one went to the bottom one shift click highlights all of them and dragged it across and like most of them were in there if there's duplicates it just says like do you want to duplicate them or just like skip the duplicates then just make sure you click skip duplicates because you don't want two of one copy mate i then went in and made my new playlist so god off the top of my head i went i'm pretty sure i did like rollers liquid uh, dance floor slash euphoric other and like a few other playlists so playlist is totally up to you how you decide to how you how you decide to structure your playlist there's no real like right or wrong way to do it but obviously sub genres is a good way to go and I personally even struggle sometimes to like divide out music into the right sub genres but even then as long as you know sort of where your tracks are then that's all that really matters because you're the one who's fucking mixing with them so yeah i did make another one called like crowd pleasers and stuff so they're like absolute bangers etc and yeah so that's sort of the first thing that i did and then it was literally just a matter of process this took quite a while this is why it took two hours because i've got about at the moment 600 tracks so one by one i went through them some of them i really like i listened to a second of them or so just to like familiar familiarize myself to make sure i was putting them into the right place but most of them i could just drag and drop and i was just drag and dropping them to the right folders some of them appeared in two there were some tracks that i was like yeah i want that in liquid but i also want that in euphoric obviously there was like double ups with uh, roll rollers and dance floor in terms of not double ups and rollers and dance floor but double ups in terms of putting those into my like crowd pleasers if that makes sense so that's the longest process and that's the thing that's going to take you the longest but it's also the most important like how organized your files are really does depend on how well your playlists are named and how well they're structured so yeah make sure you spend a bit of time in that and then once you're happy with your names or your playlist you can start dragging and dropping them across right decent so that's that in terms of how i organize now my music files now you know what they look like so when i like plug my usb in those are the folders so if i'm doing a mix for example i'll probably either if i'm winging it i'll just go on like all tracks and just work my way through all of the tracks or if i'm like trying to hop in between genres etc or just want to do a liquid mix obviously i know where to go the other thing that i'd say is i do sometimes pre-make a playlist if it's like in a, a set in advance so if i'm really want to put a lot of time and energy into like getting a playlist together for like a specific mix then i will do that in the same place as you would have seen on like the back end so i will go into record box go to export mode i make a new playlist i add all my tracks to it and then like you can you can move tracks around you can either list them in key or if you press the little hashtag with the number then you can move tracks around so yeah then once i've done with that playlist i can just fucking delete it and just by deleting the playlist isn't going to delete anything from the collection so that's another thing that i did do i probably deleted about 15 tracks that i knew i weren't 
like I wasn't ever going to play. So I did just right click, delete from collection. Once you've deleted from the collection, it's gone forever. So that's just a, a point to make. Right, so that's how I sorted out my music. The next thing I'm going to talk about is USBs. As I think that, like, this is a massive part of it. So I've got three USBs, right? And you probably think that's a bit extreme, but it's definitely not a bit extreme. So this 64 gig Samsung, like, white... E silverish ones, definitely more silver. This is like, I don't even know what to call this. This is like my home hub. This is where I have all of my tracks basically. So when I download my music, it obviously goes onto my Mac like download screen. I then drag and drop the tracks from download into a file on this USB. I just call it like DMB all, and it's got all of my music on it, right? So drag it from download into this. I then drag from this USB folder, not from the download, I drag it from this into record box into the collection on export mode the reason why i drag it from this folder and nowhere else is because this is where record box will be linking the files to so if i delete tracks from this they'll say that they're missing and it's because it's trying to find it from here so if i linked it from the download and dragged and dropped from the download once i delete the download files they'll say missing files now if I have the files somewhere else, like if I had moved them to here, you can find missing files and like just Google had to find missing files in Rekordbox. But anyway, this has all of my like DJ tracks in. So once this plugs into Rekordbox, I can play all of my music and it's fucking sick and it's naughty. Right. We then have Backup. This is a 32 gig. It's like a more of a metallic grey. It's the exact same like make and model USB as the other one. It's just a 32 gig. This is backup USB. Now, what you want to do is you want to make sure that all of your USBs, so when you buy a new USB, the first thing you want to do before you put anything onto it is format it to be FAT32. So on Windows, it's called FAT32, and on like Macs, it's just called FAT, but it's also like technically, it's called just FAT, but it's FAT32, not XFAT. Basically, FAT32 means that you'll be able to use your tracks everywhere on different like monitors, different units, etc. So they're all FAT32. So what I do with this one is when you go into record box, I have my main one plugged into my laptop. I plug in the DJ backup USB also into the laptop. It comes up on rec record box. I'm still in export mode. You'll see that this one's called DJ backup. I then go into sync manager, which is at the bottom left hand corner. You then select, well, your device will come up. You select sync all playlists and you press the arrow and it will sync all of your information across including all of your cue points it will sync it across to the usb do not fucking tamper with the folders on your usb that you're exporting to in the actual folder just let it do its thing let record box do its thing how it exports it across is exactly how you want it to be and then make sure that when that loading bar at the bottom is finished loading it's got to 100 and it will like disappear Click close and make sure you fucking eject your USB from record box properly by pressing the USB. If you eject it from your laptop or if you like just pull it out, then it fucking fucks up this and you'll have issues when you take this to like gigs, etc. This is USB main. So my USB main is a different make and model to my USB backup. The reason why I recommend doing that is just because then it ensures that like if this one fucks up, there's less chance of this one fucking up because it's a different make and model. So yeah, this is a pretty naughty one. It's a SanDisk one. It's I think it's 64 or 64 gig, might be 32 gig. I do the exact same process. So I plug this in, I went onto Sync Manager, I sync all playlists, and then, yeah, basically press the arrow, it syncs it all across. All it would do is, like, whatever you had, like, previously synced onto this, it just updates depending on what you've done to your record box collection. So where I just completely, like, rechanged all of my playlists, then all it did is just, like, Whatever wasn't on my record box, but like was on here previously just fucking deleted and just like overrides everything based on what record box is telling it to do Did the same thing. I pressed close when it was finished and I ejected this so this is my main DJ like a uh, USB now the reason why th these two, the like DJ Backup and DJ USB, are different to my home hub is because if I take my home hub to a fucking DJ set and plug it into, say, like, someone else's, like, unit, or if I plug it into some CDJs, if I go to Pirate, or even if I plug it into my fucking XDJ XZ without my record box, right, this wouldn't work. All of my music on here would not come through, because, basically, all it is on here is, like, MP3 files. It's just, like, a, a library, yeah? Wouldn't work. I'd have none of my cue points on it or anything, because it's not been exported through record box, which is what we did to these two. So both of these two, if I if I plug both of these two 
into like say my xdj xz without my laptop or if i plug it into like freaking pirate studios or if i plug it into anywhere if i go to a gig if i plug either of these two in all of my tracks will come through because all pioneer stuff uses record box so the tracks have been exported through record box the right way these are fat 32 on here all of my cue points will be here all of my playlists will be here fucking sick so yeah that will stay like that until i decide to like if I then decide to go back to my home hub on like Recordbox, make some amendments to tracks, download some new tracks, put cue points on them, they'll appear on here, which is my home hub one, which will be plugged into my laptop. They won't appear, obviously, on these two until I fucking update them. So until I plug them back in and send them across. If everything's the same, if all I'm doing is like adding an extra 10 tracks and downloading them across to, exporting them across to these two, it will literally take like two minutes. The only reason why the download then took a bit longer is because it was a whole restructuring mate. Right, I hope that makes sense. I am happy to like go through it a bit more with people in detail if you just send me like a DM and stuff like that. I'm not a fucking master at it, but at the same time, I'm starting to understand it a lot more obviously now than I did at the start. Like, shout out to my mate Aiden. He probably won't watch this, but he's helped me out massively. Um, he's a DJ as well. He DJs at Motion. Check him out on SoundCloud. His name's A dot dot D A N. And yeah, he helped me out massively understanding Record Box. Hopefully, I've been able to help you understand as well. So yeah. A massive part of DJing is just being organised, being organised with tracks and don't have a shitload of tracks on your like collection or on your USBs that you're never going to play. So like a big, big problem that I fell into or like a problem is not probably the right word, something, a mistake that I did and obviously learned from it, it's all part of the process. But at the start, I never used to buy tracks really individually because I was like, oh, these tracks appear on this album. There's 20 tracks on this album. This album costs a tenner. So therefore, if I get 20 tracks for 10 quid, works out 50p a track rather than buying like the tracks individually now that was really stupid because then i download the album import all of the fucking 20 tracks across to my record box then realize that actually out of all of those 20 tracks on that album there's only seven of them that i actually really like to a point in which i would play so then i had 13 tracks that were dead i then technically lost money because if i bought those tracks individually then it only would have been seven quid if that makes sense. So then I had to not only go back and delete all 13 tracks that I'm never going to fucking use, but I lost three quid. So yeah, basically just don't download albums because you think it works out cheaper. Look at the album, look how many tracks are on the album that you would actually use. If there's not that many, buy the tracks individually. Don't fucking import albums if you're not going to use all of the tracks because yeah, imagine having a thousand tracks but only 400 of them you only ever want to play. Imagine trying to sift through them on a gig or on a set or even just at a fucking house party if 60% of them are ones you're never going to play. You're going to be in for a fucking tough one, mate. Right. If that doesn't make sense, or if I went a bit like quickly through it, then one, I'm sorry, but obviously it's a video and I've already fucking been speaking for 13 minutes, which is a bit of a joke. Two, just go back and rewatch it, make some notes as you go along. But yeah, definitely reach out to me. If you have any further questions of me, I'm about to go for a walk and then going to do some mixing. Going to end this video here. I hope you fucking like it. I'm hopefully going to get this out for Friday. I know I said I'm going to be uploading less videos and that still is kind of the case. Like I said, one or two a week, but it does depend on how busy I am with actual like nine to five work. Like today, Obviously, it wasn't so busy, so managed to get some other bits done, which is all fucking sick, mate. But, yeah, I'm just, I'm just fucking doing what I can, mate, and the support has been unreal. So, I appreciate everyone. I'll see you in the next one. And you're all fucking legends, mate. Yes, mate.